Cumbrus and Toltec Railroad may be the most well-known logging railroad that operated between Colorado and New Mexico, but in the early 1900s, New Mexico had 107 operating ra railroads. In 1897, the Eddy brothers began building a line in southern New Mexico to Alamogordo then into timber country in the Sacramento Mountains. They realized a need for timber and railroad ties, and the Sacramento Mountains were a source. The railway climbed into the clouded heavens reaching the timber country of cloud crop, terminating at a place called Russia. From a railroader's point of view, this was an impossible railroad to build and more impossible to carry trains. No engine or car built today could make it to the end of this rail world without derailing. Steep grades were the rule and railroads hate steep grades. Worse yet, curves exceeded 12%. Switchbacks were required to avoid steepest of grades and tight curves. As an engineering accomplishment, this may have been the most spectacular railroad ever built in America. Still, the Little Impossible Railroad operated from 1900 to 1943. Alamogordo Lumber Company managed the timber harvest. At this time, hand saws and animal hauling with horses and mules were used. Logs were skidded to landings along the railroad spur, where they were loaded by steam loaders into the log cars. The first timber harvest began its journey to the mill at the foot of the mountain via the new railway in 1900. The Alabogordo and Sacramento Mountain Railroad was in business. Steam power increased man's ability to tame and control nature. Man's inventiveness was at work to do more with less. One of the inventions, the Shea locomotive engine, was crucial to the expansion of logging in the mountains. Ephraim Shea was a timberman frustrated by the performance of rod locomotives of the day. He created and operated an engine with a single steam cylinder attached to a crankshaft. He sold the manufacturing rights to Lima Locomotive Works in Lima, Ohio, sometimes in the 1880s. Over 2,700 Shea with multiple steam cylinders were sold by Lima Manufacturing, most sold to lumber bin in the United States. Later, the Litcherwood logging system was introduced to more efficiently transport logs to the railway. By 1916, log skidding was done in the Sacramento Mountains with the Ledger Wood system. The Ledger Wood is a multi-drum steam skidder 
It was located at the top of ridges and connected by cables to trees below. Logs were skidded up to the steam skidder. The Lidgerwood system efficiently moved timber in the mountains, enabling more trees to be harvested. introduction of machine logging technology into the mountains after 1910, the streams and soils of the mountains were increasingly destroyed. The steep climbing shade locomotives along with overhead cableway skidders and giant bandsaws allowed operators to cut more timber at only a fraction of the cost of earlier methods. When the easy timber was cut, they simply picked up the rails and ties, loaded them on work trains, and moved them to the next location. It became plain even to the lumbermen themselves that excessive and indiscriminate cutting supplemented by fire will destroy any forest. The advances in technology far exceeded the political system's ability to manage the changes until clear-cut and burnt-over mountains led concerned Americans to expand the national forest movement in the United States. The vast national forest lands that were set aside away from timber companies, homesteaders, and livestock interests are still in existence today. Controversy about the management of these forest lands abound. But the fact that there is a national forest and national park speaks well of a young country with vast natural resources to save millions of acres for the people. Without these national forest lands still in the public ownership after more than 100 years, there would be nothing left to argue about. The last passenger train climbed the mountain in 1938 and the last freight train went down the hill in 1947. Looking west from the Sacramento Mountains, you can see White Sands in the upper left of the slide. Just south of White Sands is Trinity, the site of the first test of a nuclear device. In July 1945, the age of nuclear energy began just as steam railroading ended in the mountains. So once again, Man has the challenge of managing technological progress. We would do well to match our success in managing the era of steam.